Welcome back. As you can see, we have a sign for the Grand Hotel. Used a paint marker or Sharpie to color in the letters. I've had this sitting around <laughs> since last year when I had a bit of a fail. I don't know if you can see how there's a hold my fat finger in there. You see how there's a like a gap or some gaps there? Let's see if I can bring that up there. So I don't know if you can see there. The slicer removes the features because yeah you didn't really want this there. I'd, below a certain I don't know what you want to call it, dimension even even the I, I think the problem is it gets below the uh, actual smallest size that it can print which is what 0.2 millimeter in my case that's uh, eight thousandths so if your feature size is less than eight thousandths and again I, I use that I kind of keep that in mind when I design these the feature the brick features are 48 thousandths or 1.2 millimeter and the back part that everything sits on it's 24 thousandths or what is that uh, 0.6 millimeter I uh, sipping some coffee there and I hope that I successfully spliced in uh, our mock-up from yesterday out in the yard I kind of uh, I just used the leftover experimental boxes from uh, the passenger car lighting project to prop it up it's not going to stay that bright yellow but oh see them ghostly walls flapping there I don't know if I'm leaving them like that or actually I don't know maybe I'll put a what do you call a fogger effect or something in there it looks good from a distance <laughs> So anyway, um, one thing I did notice from yesterday was using the blank panel for the center part. Got some sticky tape, which helped. And the uh, blank panel versus the window panel. Yeah, I, I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is try and make an attempt at slicing this apart at the overlap. If I have some of the brick left over at the bottom, so be it. It'll be at the base of the building, and I'll probably be doing some other ground cover techniques there in any case. Hopefully we'll hide it. But all in all, I'm uh, very pleased. So hopefully today, later when I get the rest of this, I just tape these middle sections here. Um, for the mock-up, I'll glue these up and then hopefully later be able to paint them. I have to mask for where I might put the, uh, what do you call those, cornice work and any of the columns. So I'll have to leave space for the, the liquid plastic cement using that bottle technique to be able to seep in there. The other thing is going to be the window frames. I'll have to, uh, you know, as I said, these are too small. I'll have to print some new ones, design them before I can print them. Found another one out there that was laying on the ground. Uh, let's see. Do I have? Yeah, okay. These outside ones I used the and even that Kind of a tight fit. If you can see that, let's see if I can. It'll snap in there, but I probably should trim the the area. I leave a sixty-fourth of an inch. What is that? 0 0.016, so roughly 0 0.4 millimeter <coughs> border around that, just to give you kind of a an interference fit there, snap fit. And that, that holds them in there, but 
probably what I'll do when I redesign it is I'll have it glue in from the back. Now the other thing I may do is, um, and I'll pop up a, an example of what I'm talking about, is there's other more decorative features that they have above the, oh here, let me hold it the correct way, above and then beneath the like the windowsill features are prominent, more prominent with the masonry and stick out. So let's see if I have no, I don't have anything handy I can show you. In any case, we'll work on that later. Today, today's goal is to get the rest of this all glued up and uh, painted, and then have the entire face as one piece. Then we'll work on uh, the other thing I need to design up real quick is some corner work, you know, to go around this shape here make it look like it's supposed to be that way versus this kind of ugly gap and that'll be some kind of a cap or an overlap either well I'll see if I can't pop up another picture of bigger block smaller block bigger block you know where it goes around the corner I'll show you what I mean now that's where we're at I am loving our first days of fall here in Florida I don't know if you'd call it that, our golden rain tree is changing from that bright yellow to those red pods, if you will. And uh, maybe I'll pop a picture up there. It was so beautiful out yesterday. We were outside all day. The boys, if they weren't spoiled before that, they were definitely spoiled yesterday. And uh, we had the, we've had the house open since yesterday morning. It was, oh, I don't know high 60s, 68, 69 when we woke up. This morning we woke up to 61 degrees, so it's definitely cool. But uh, I'll take that over 95 and 95% 95 humidity any day. <laughs> so hopefully we'll be able to get outside and um, paint these up, make them a little bit less bright canary yellow. I don't know what you'd call that color yellow. <laughs> Ann says it looks like a Miami hotel and I'm like Miami hotel. Oh because of the bright yellow color. I get it. Yeah. So we're going to tone that down. We're going to make it uh, more of a cream brick color and what, I'd, what I'll do is I'll just I'll mask off where I still have joints and I, I have uh, you know uh, seams, columns and cornices to uh, glue on there with the dropper bottle. And uh, one thing I didn't like was this blank. Let me see if I can get this put together for you. I didn't like this blank panel here. I The block shows through these windows, but I can always hide that with um, what I had done before was I just made a... Where is it? There it is. Oh, geez. I just made a, a blank backing out of just some eighth inch black ABS that has the pattern one side and the smooth the other. And that seemed to work well. This was originally meant for the larger size windows. The other thing I can do is, I don't know if you can see this, I had gotten some they call it clear, it's actually translucent, but you can see where I tried to plastic weld in there and didn't quite take. But uh, put like a Venetian blind pattern and then a frosted to where from the front with light coming through. Let's see if I can. Well, here, let me do this. With light coming through, that's a little bit too much. Well, there we go. That, that, that'll do. It looks kind of like Venetian blinds. Okay. Close enough. From a distance, it just looks like a fogged over window. And do I have one? I also have some translucent, or cl what they call clear dark green, which looks more like a soda glass window. We'll put some window treatments on there, but I have to mask off 
where I'm going to glue those in, where I'm going to glue everything up. So for yesterday, I had just taped this all together for mocking up. Uh, what I'll do is I'll off camera finish gluing this up, getting everything masked, and uh, we'll paint that, that cream brick color. And another thing I'm going to do, and I, I don't know if you can see, oh yeah, look, the uh, light shines right through it. We'll, uh, we'll spray paint that uh, a black, there's the, to kind of block the light from coming through. We don't want, uh, we don't want transparent building walls. That's where we're at. Let's see where we go from here. See you then. <laughs> All right, there it is. Proof you can cut these apart after about a thousand passes with a sharp exacto knife on the back. I literally scored it until I was able to snap it. Kind of like the styrene techniques. But uh, I'll try and take off any extra. And now don't cut towards yourself. There we go. Get any extra off of there. Making a nice smooth edge and snap. There, now I have two pieces. One where that's the bottom. One where that's the top. So I think I'll go with this as the bottom. And we'll replace that bright yellow with that better bright canary yellow. Anyway, I don't know what you'd call that, lemon yellow? Okay, doesn't matter. All right, now we, now we glue. See you in a few. All right, just a brief update here. I thought I'd bring you back for a quick update while I'm gluing the rest of these pieces together. I haven't quite got the painting yet, but uh, I figured it would be worth a, a look to see, to see how I did it. Got them all. I did all the center pieces. Got all the two sections, then put that those two sections together along the center. Now I'm gluing the um, outside tower sections in to the middle section to where I have one continuous wall that I can take outside. We'll paint it, mask it, paint it, and then we can bring it back in to assemble. What I like to do is just flow it along there. Comes out kind of quick under its own pressure. Just kind of work this back and forth as much as you can with that masking tape on there. Just enough to make contact with the other piece and while it softens. Get a grab, get a hold, and see if I can find my scraper piece without making a whole big mess here. Oh no, where's it at? Well, it's around here somewhere, so let's see. By the time I find it, it will be too late. Oh, I found it. I put it right where I'd remember it was. And promptly forgot where I put it. Alright, so do a little skim. It only left a little bit. But, uh, I don't know. I'm not going to worry. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not going to worry too much about filling in the, the gaps. I did take a piece of 100 grit sandpaper and lay it down and any of the obvious high spots I kind of smoothed out to where I could get a somewhat uniform gap. It's never going to be perfect unless you want to sand forever and all day. So let me get this other one here and uh, we'll be back. All right. Blacked out is done. And you can see all those window blanks. Okay, let me pop one of those out of there. See, they all wanted to come flying out, so. 
I think you see why I put them in there now. They give a nice little outline that you can glue to. We'll let that uh, have some time to cure and come back out, flip it over and get the brick color on it. After some masking, of course, bring it back in. All right, we're set up, masked off for the brick color. Got a couple of the corner joins here. And I'll paint the sign and then color in the letters again and see how that looks. I'm really going to redo that, but for now at least I'll have a sign. So put some blanks in there. We'll see how those turn out. Bregel, please. You can see how they look almost greenish, that bright yellow with the black on the back it's almost like an olive or a green color interesting anyway here's the paint I'm using it's rust-oleum satin and where's the color at there it is I think yeah almond anyway um, Ace was having a closeout last year, so I scooped up probably a dozen cans at least. I'll uh, come back when I'm done shaking and baking here. All right, the deed is done. We'll see how this uh, looks after it dries. I got a little heavy in places, but uh, again, if it looks good from a distance, I'm not going to be right up on it like I would my HO layout. Five foot's probably the closest I'm going to get to it, or anyone else. But we'll make it look good. Why bother if we're not going to make it look good? All right. Here's the mock-up that we saw outside yesterday. I've uh, printed some of the pillars, column, whatever you want to call them. Can see where I've masked in the darker yellow. These will be overlaid with the columns, and that should hide the seam. Same here, same here. These seams here are kind of self-hiding, so I think we're good. The other thing that I've done. It's uh, painted, obviously, but I painted the corners to where now we can fit those. So, if you remember from out outside, this will extend the rest of the way up for that column. But around the corner, we had to notch because <coughs> the side panels or along the roof of that middle section are only that tall. That brings up another issue it looks like is uh, I'll have to snip a little extra off of here to match that because that matches there but now I've got a little bit of an overlap mainly because I didn't put another row on the top, opting for a, a bit of filigree or cornice work, corbel, whatever you want to call it. It goes along the top there. I shouldn't put that arm in front of the camera. Um, these are just stacked along here. Again, there's that big, that big arm in the way. Need to get out of that habit. So, these are extras for when we get to the back face of the building. I've printed a number of these uh, side panels, if you can imagine this going along the, the side of the, around the corner of the building. It's really for this corner down here that's more visible, but uh, I had none of those. I thought I had a couple of them, but they're the other size. 
So I've printed two in, in the background. I don't know if you can hear the 3D printer. Actually printing the third one that I need for that wall. I'll need three more for this wall. And then for the back, I'll need three, six, nine, ten more of the window sections. Plus, I have three extras. I'll need three more of these. And more of these corners here. So I need three corners here, three corners here, and then two in the middle. So what I have now is it prints six at a time. However, I don't know if you can let's see if I can get you a better angle, some better light. I don't know. I have the windows open. I have the blinds open, bright sunlight, and it's still this magnifier light that takes the Okay, I think you can see the, uh, it's hard to see with that yellow, there we go, there's a, you can see the spider webbing there, stringing, and that's because I turned off uh, retraction in the settings, um, it looked like it was doing some weird things in the slicer, but it it's just that version of the slicer, I guess. I'm a, a few versions behind, but I'm afraid to upgrade because that's one of those, if it ain't broke, well, I think we'll uh, experiment with it. And what I've done in the past is I've, I've got one version of the slicer on the desktop machine here in the office and another one running on the laptop so I can compare the two and see if there's any difference, any change, any hiccups before I upgrade. I think you see all the extra. Let's see if I can get this a little closer, but the focus isn't. You can see the fuzz along here, along here. My big fat finger wasn't in there. So what I've been doing is taking the exacto knife, just a number 17 blade, and scrape along there. And that takes all that fuzz off of there. Gives you a nice realistic surface. I, I don't know if you can see on this, but it looks kind of like the brick is varied and worn, like it would be on the corner of a building. And uh, one thing I haven't done yet, <clears throat> once this is all together and painted in this almond color for these light colored bricks, I'll take and make a a darker colored like a latex wash to fill in all the crevices and really bring out the detail make the, the mortar lines pop they look pretty good now I mean just the natural shadows but out in the sunlight it'll it'll kind of fade so you need to kind of uh, more than kind of you need to exaggerate that contrast so that it's noticeable and with that we're on our way to having a, an actual functional skin. Oh, this is my best. This is my favorite here. I uh, Not only did I paint that the brick color, but I went back over it again with my... Uh, oh, no. Cam must be out in the yard with my brown paint marker. My Sharpie. There we go. Brown. <laughs> What's up, Briggle? Barking at the neighbor dog because the neighbor dog's barking at you. There you go. Feelings mutual, I guess. All right, so I'll finish cleaning the rest of these up. I, I already have one, and I don't know if you can see the difference. There's still a little bit of extra little surface. discrepancy with it deformities what what's the word I'm looking for little nose <laughs> anyway it gives a character and it makes it look like it's uh, a real building because uh, nothing is as perfect as one of the die caster injection molded pieces that you get and uh, yes I will have parting lines from the brim because of the way I printed this. I mean, the only other 
I printed it flat like this, so the brim kind of holds those two lines as it comes up to meet off of the platen. Like that. It grows it from the, the print bed down here up in these little TP shaped columns. Well, the, the alternative would be to stand it up and to actually put a uh, a raft to hold these and the problem is now every time the thing goes back and forth the taller they get the more leverage they have the greater lever arm so the same amount of force is multiplied by that length to where it'll actually knock it over knock it right off and then you get the giant spaghetti monster flying in the air as it continues to try and print where there's something that's supposed to be there but not. So I'll finish cleaning this up and come back when I have these all glued up. I, uh, I want to start with these columns and getting these corners fixed to where they line up. I don't know if you can see or not but I made these two bricks wide and then masked off a brick on either side of the seam. So up here these are a brick and a half but they go around the corner so I have to match that to a brick I don't know if you can see or not but there's a there's a bit of an overhang let me see if I can get it to where can you see that yeah that's too hard to see it's in the shadow trust me there's a bit of an overhang but that gives a little bit of slop if you will to be able to slide this down over the concrete blocks and not have the fit be absolutely critical. The last thing I want is to be off by an eighth of an inch and all of a sudden nothing fits and now I've got to split seams just to force it. So, you can see I painted the back of these that flat black and I don't know what it is. This, I mean, this sets up real quick. Within, within a half an hour I, I can do whatever I need to with it. This almond, I don't know if it's, be, if it's um, because it's enamel and that's maybe a lacquer. I don't know. This is still, shall we say, outgassing. You walk in the office, all you can smell is spray paint still. And it, I sprayed it going on 24 hours ago now. I did it outside to where it could off gas, out gas, whatever you want to call that. And uh, it was still tacky hours later. I didn't bring this inside till last night, probably as it was getting dark, around 7 o'clock maybe, 6.30, somewhere around there. This is a good stopping point. We'll be back with part three where we share how we transform two-dimensional flats like this into a three-dimensional skin for the Grand Hotel. See you then. Thanks for watching.